There has been a reality shift in the manufacture of vehicles now for going on 10 plus years, even big American trucks. They're not even made of steel anymore, right? They're all aluminum, or at least mine is, and most of Ford's are aluminum-based bodies. But we're seeing vehicles with total glass roofs, like Tesla's, different composite material, lots of plastics. And we've known forever that Jeeps, in particular Jeeps, don't provide like the best ground plane for mounting a simple mobile radio on their chassis, on the, on the frame, wherever. It gets a little difficult. They actually make special devices to little mounts that you can bolt onto the side of Jeeps to improve the situation. So Comet, in an attempt to kind of I guess, work a market space that hasn't really been utilized, they started making a ground independent antenna. Now, when I heard that, I was like, oh, ground independent, that feels like, you know, a, a big leaky uh, transformer at the base of an HF antenna. And yeah, it's 50 ohms, but it doesn't perform that well. And they said, no, it's not like that at all. In fact, when you give a ground independent antenna like this, this GI250, it will perform better when it has a, a decent vehicle ground underneath it. So really, to me, it sounds like it's just a little bit of antenna insurance. Is that all real? I, I don't know, but that's why we're at the park. So I'm gonna mount these on my truck. We're gonna transmit on low power and high power back to my home station, where we're going to be use, using it to track the received power and recording it. And you'll also be able to hear the recorded audio. So you get an idea of how well these antennas perform. I have three with me. One is the standard tested, highly reviewed SBB5. This is my general all around good performer. This is just a regular non, or I guess it is ground dependent, not ground independent antenna. These have been around forever. We use this as a baseline. It's just a really good antenna to compare against. Next to it though, we have the GI250. It's almost the same as the SBB5, except they went with this little, possibly a coil under there. And this has a fold over a pull and turn, which is really, really nice. This is, this is, depending on how this results go, this could be my new standard. But then next to it, and, and the last one we're gonna review, is the big, big GI 900. This thing is a beast, and don't mind the little zero there. These are proto, these are production prototypes. This is basically the last production prototype before they went into full, uh, full production here. So you will see these soon at Ham Radio Outlet, Gigaparts, DX Engineering, wherever you purvey fine amateur radio products. But this thing is an absolute beast. I mean, I don't even know, can you see it off the, it's just huge. Now, this is a like a camper type antenna. This is possibly even something you can run from home. Like if you have a problem with having a good ground system, you can put this outside with an NMO mount, an external NMO mount, or even a vehicle mount, a clamp mount, a something mount, and you'll be able to use this uh, pretty effectively, I think. But only the testing will tell us if we should consider these as good options. So let's throw some uh, fire down the wire and test these things out. Baseline test, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu with the Comet SBB5 on low power, low power. Comet SBB5, high power, high power. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test with the Comet SBB5 on 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test with the Comet SBB5 on 70 centimeters, high power, high power. It's always nice to have like a baseline antenna that you test over and over every time you do these tests. So the SBB5 is kind of like that baseline antenna for mobile antennas, at least for my videos. Uh, we're gonna test the two ground independent ones now and let's take a look at those. Okay, this could be my new staple antenna. It's not very big. It's about the same size as the SBB, the SBB5. I like the pullover feature, the tilt. That's handy. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the Comet GI250. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the GI250 high power, high power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu test with the GI250 low power 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the GI250 on 70 centimeters. All right, so then this absolute beast is the GI 900. This thing is huge. This has a twisting collar for fold over. It is a very big antenna. Now I have found that uh, this is us NMO and I have had this on my truck for, I guess, four days. 
and I really had to get in there and torque it down onto the mount because it kind of like will work itself up a little bit. Maybe that's just my mount set up here. Maybe I just didn't give it enough. I'm not trying to make it too tight that I'm going to damage anything, but tight enough that it's not going to come loose. I found that I had to go, actually, when I went up here to do this video, it was a little loose. It needed a little bit of tightening down, uh, but I have been running this, so I'm kind of anxious to see how it performs. Let's test it. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the GI 990 on low power two meter test. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the GI 990 two meter high power, two meter high power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on the GI 990 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the GI 990 high power, high power. This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu test. I couldn't leave it at that. I had to test this in a non-ground environment. So I'm back at the park on a plastic table. I have a NMO mag mount, so I, I couldn't get around that. I have to use something to hold the antenna out. So here we go. This is going to be... Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the SBB-5 on a plastic table at 945.30. Two meter high power. And let's try 70 centimeter. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the SVB5 on a plastic table at 9.45.49 a.m. 70 centimeter high power. Now interestingly enough, uh, there is gardeners behind me and I don't know how well I'm coming out. So I may have to super impose or dub over the top of this with actual audio. But yeah. <laughs> This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu with the ground independent mobile antenna on a plastic table on high power, high power, two meters. This is 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing with the ground independent antenna on 70 centimeters high power at 9.46, 46 a.m. I realize that my just person being here is probably affecting the radio or the antenna to a degree as far as it being ground independent. I was a little surprised though by the SWR on the SBB-5 because it was, it was actually pretty good. So let's, let's test this one now and get some pictures. So this is their 450. Well, I think they're probably both gonna have decent SWR, it's probably going to favor, like the, the transmission power um, is probably gonna be better on the GI antennas, but I don't know. Now they're, they're tuned about the same. In fact, it's a little, um, little high. So that means these antennas are a little uh, short if you wanted to be lower in the band. So just keep that in mind. Most repeaters are towards the high end of the band anyway, which is where most people are using this stuff. So you probably don't need to worry about that. So let's plug it back into the radio here. This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on the GI900 at 949 and 10 seconds on 70 centimeters high power. This is Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on the GI900 Two meters, two meters high power at 949.25. As an experiment uh, with the camera running, I'm just going to get this thing away from me and see what that does. Find the fact. That should have been maybe part of my test. I didn't know to expect to do this, but here we go. As an experiment uh, with the camera running, I'm just going to get this thing away from me and see what that does. Find the fact. That should have been maybe part of my test. I didn't know to expect to do this, but here we go. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu, this is the GI 900 on two meters transmitting with the table far away as an experiment, as an experiment. May need to do another update on this at 9.50, 9.50 a.m. Okay, now I'm really interested. Uh, let's do a synopsis breakdown. Josh, editing Josh, please help me out. How do the numbers look in, uh, how should we deploy these antennas? I'm curious. All right, a couple things first here. There will have to be a follow-on video because one, I think the mag mount having almost 17 feet of coax was giving a match, if you will, to the antenna. Now, realistically, 
the ground independent antennas still have to be fed so there will always be shield of the coax a part of it which will give a match to the antenna when looking purely at the numbers both when you're talking about the ground in the truck and then the free mounted plastic table we did see some benefit and i will note that my numbers got screwed up on 70 centimeters that's why you don't see it on the latter half on the plastic table but let's look at those when looking at the numbers on my truck, all the antennas performed well. You can see the, the 900 eked out a win, but really that's not even a full DBM difference between the SBB5 and the GI250. So they're good news. They're all, they're all pretty good antennas when you mount it on a good ground, like how I have my, trunk, my truck set up. So, okay, great. You get no disadvantage of going with one of these antennas. And I think the GI250 is the sweet spot here. It gives you that fold over. It's going to work a tad better when you have a not great ground, which we'll, sh we'll talk about when we get to the plastic table. But let's look at 70 centimeters. 70 centimeters, couple of dBs to the 900 above the SBB5 and the GI250. But again, GI250 almost identical to the SBB5. So no real loss there. The GI250 is a good option if you're looking for an antenna that you may move from, say, a Tesla with a glass glass you know roof to something that has a more traditional ground type of setup that's going to work out great for you so so far so good but what happens when we talk about the table and i apologize no 70 centimeter data but let's talk about two meters now both ground independent antennas did 10 db about better than the sbb5 that is noticeable that is actually important so yes when it's mounted to about 17 feet of feed line and i was relatively close to it that played a factor the ground independent antennas were better on two meters than the sbb5 so that is a data point that is interesting if you have you know not a great situation where you're not putting a lot of metal underneath one of these antennas say at home you don't have a great mount poor you know setup these will still do pretty well and now note the power in dbm you notice how that number is actually much lower than we were looking at on my truck that's my fault that was on my receiver i had the gain set up too high normally i set that at a very specific amount and i unfortunately bumped it and there you go that's what that shows differently i try to normalize the values here but you can see the same effect was against the SBB5 as the ground independence. The gain is universally applied here. So 10 dB would have been seen regardless of, you know, where the gain was at. So interesting note, interesting note. But the biggest note, I think, is that FAR option when we tested the GI900 away from me. Then I was no longer in close proximity to the antenna. And then all of a sudden, 10 dB loss. So yeah. Okay, interesting note there too. My not being present by the antenna did impact things a little bit, particularly on the received power at my home station. Now, last but not least, I wanna say a big thank you to all the Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to get out there and do videos like these by buying things like a mag mount that ultimately I'm gonna end up cutting all the coax off of it and testing right up against it to see what the number of difference we can actually get with these ground independents against the SBB5. So tune in for the next video where we do a bit of a torture test in like a freestanding vertical. I don't know what to expect. So thanks again to the patrons who allow me to have a little bit of extra cash to play around with these tests. So you don't go blow your money on something that may not be worth it. At the same time, I think this is pretty cool. A 10 dB difference, you know, depending on what is adjacent to the antenna is a factor. That's actually an important number to keep in mind. I think the, to, the GI250 is the sweet spot here. Definitely, definitely. They actually make a smaller version of this that I'm thinking about getting my hands on to do a little bit of testing. So I would love to hear your comments in the video below. Thank you so much for taking the time and watching it. Do appreciate all the support, even if it is simply giving me a like and hit subscribe. YouTube has been a little weird these last couple of months, so make sure you do hit subscribe and check it and hit that bell too so you, want, you get notified when I go live again. Thanks everybody for watching. Appreciate all the support. 73.